Human rights groups have criticised an all-male gathering of more than 4,500 Taliban leaders, clerics and elders in Afghanistan for not addressing concerns about the rights of women and girls. It's been 290 days since the Taliban stopped teenage girls from attending school, making Afghanistan the only country in the world to enforce such a policy. The Taliban have called on the international community for recognition. But diplomats say the ban on girls' education is one of the main reasons they remain outcasts. Let's take you live to Yelda. Yelda Hakim, who joins us now in Kabul. So despite this gathering, Yelda, girls are still not back at school? They are not, Lucy. And you and I have been discussing this for the last nine, ten months since the Taliban swept to power. Uh, for 290 days, as you say, girls have been, from secondary school, have been denied the right to get an education. The Taliban continually say that they are not opposed to education, that they will eventually get girls back to school. But this remains a sticking point for the international community. And that gathering of 4,500 men, all men, came together, clerics, elders, Taliban leaders, to talk about the key issues. And with me now is Dr. Kalan Ebad, who is the health minister for the Taliban, who was there at the Jirga, and he can tell us a little bit more about what he saw and what he heard. So thank you so much for joining us here on the program. It was an all-male gathering, and in fact, Taliban leaders said, we will represent women. Do you think that's fair? Uh, the first thing I want to share with you, uh, uh, that the Jirga uh, and the member who was participated uh, in this one Jirga uh, this was not planned by the, the government. Uh, this was uh, planned by the community scholars and the elders of the society. Uh, they, they said that, that we want to we arrange uh, one of the jirga uh, to we can talk with the, uh, the government authorities to sit, we sit with them to understand and introduce to each and another. Yet Taliban leaders, the, the supreme leader was there, the prime minister was there, the cabinet was there, you were there as the health minister. And not one person from the cabinet, from the Taliban, raised the issue of girls' education. Two scholars did, but not the Taliban. No, this is not right. But uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we have uh, finished our this jirga on uh, alignment points. Uh, one of them was the nine point was, was It was also talking about the education, the health, the technology, uh, and the agriculture and many other things it was relevant just not only for the mans or uh, uh, for the both genders the males and the females for the children's whether it's a male or the female yes we have talked and uh, the finalization of this one uh, issue like education yes uh, the scholars and the elders of the society uh, they have requested and also finalized this that we will promote uh, the, the education both for the both genders. Then, then what's taking them so long? Because the doors are shut to girls' education across this country, barring a few provinces. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, this is one of the issues because we want, uh, the Imarat of Islami uh, wants the education in the whole of Afghanistan, the equivalent educational services in the uh, uh, whole of Afghanistan. As you know that, that we have uh, problems in the health services, we have the uh, same problems uh, relevant to the, 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 the female and the girls' education in the 34 provinces of the Afghanistan. Many of our provinces have no uh, basic uh, primary schools uh, in, in Afghanistan. So for this purpose, we are going to arrange and to plan how we can give equivalent services in the educational field for the girls. What is the plan, though? Because they were told in March they could go to school, and then they were told to go back home. What is the actual plan? Is there a timeline? I Did think, they discuss this? I think... Uh, uh, the, the main issue is the economical problem. As you know that, that all of our funds are freezed outside the country. So for this purpose, to, we can um, uh, build an infrastructure uh, for the girls' education to arrange uh, a female uh, uh, teachers and uh, many staffs for the school. So it needs uh, the, the funds and uh, the economical strength. So that's why we are trying our best to, first of all, we can arrange uh, some funds for the school and then go to, to build our uh, infrastructures and arrange the staffs for the schools. But, but there are currently schools, secret schools, secret madrasas that I've been to here in Kabul where people are doing it in their homes, they're trying to educate their girls. They're worried. You are an educated man, you're a doctor, you are the health minister, you have studied and worked alongside women as well. Do you find this uh, appalling, uh, a red line? Look, the thing is that uh, that education is 
uh, as important for the men, it's also important for the females, for the girls. Yes, uh, it's not uh, the, the thinking of a man, it's, the, it's the, the teaching of the Islams that it's uh, equal for the man and the woman. This is the one thing and it's very clear. But uh, we are not just only uh, working on the, on the infrastructures and the arrangement of the staff. We are also uh, some concerns about the slavers and we have some concerns about uh, the hijab and uh, uh, some what, concerns, what some Did concerns about the, the separate system. But, but uh, for many the, of for the, the schools are segregated. Girls wear a hijab. They're yeah. very modestly dressed. Yeah. So when the Taliban say there's technicalities, do you find that frustrating? Uh, I think uh, the main thing is that uh, that uh, um, uh, uh, the, the many uh, part of our country and especially our females, the 99 or the 90 percent of our females are uh, arranging us, uh, the scarves. But it's a very small amount of the females who, who are not okay with the with the, with the scarves. But what we want, we try, that uh, we have uh, our Afghan culture and uh, we have also Islamic culture. So we can implement the Afghan and uh, Islamic culture in our society. Afghanistan remains the only country in the world banning secondary schools for girls. There are many Muslim countries. Do you want to see girls back to school and would you just briefly call on the Taliban leadership to do this? I think uh, if you can ask me about the, the, the medical education, so I have answer because uh, we have switched on of the nursing, the midwifery schools and the medical education for the females and also uh, we allowed all of our uh, females for the, for the post-graduation trainings and many other activities in the health sector. Dr. Ebad, thank you so much for joining us here on the program. Well, that's it from me here in Kabul. I will be back uh, in the next 40 minutes with a special here uh, on Impact, but back uh, to the studio, uh, Lucy, to you, and goodbye for now from us here in Kabul.